Hey everybody, welcome back to Ink and Effort, the podcast where we turn your writing dreams into a productive reality one page at a time. I'm your host, James Fox, and last week with last week was our mid-season sweep, so I actually had the week off. Yes, got some writing done. It was very nice. Uh, but before that, we had a talk about motivation and staying motivated with MC Beeler, and um, we all need that. I mean, like, I needed that with the podcast, right? Like, I, I needed that with my writing, and uh, it just turns out it worked, because I got off that episode, and I immediately started writing. I had a really good good week of writing. Um, I did, like, 10K a day across four books. Not 10K each book, but total. Um, it was uh, it was really quite something. So, you know, staying motivated is, is half the battle, right? I mean, remember G.I. Joe, you know, uh, it's... It's a, a thing of if you if you can stay motivated and you can stay in the trenches, then there you go. It's it's a, you're there. You're doing the work, right? You're putting words down, and that's what we want to do here. Is we want to help you and encourage you to put words down. So I thought it was a really cool episode. This week dovetails nicely into that because it's about being efficient with your time, right? And as you're writing, you're putting this draft down. It's real great, uh, but you want to sell it, right? You want to publish it. You want to you want to make money with this. You want this to be your career, right? That's what this is all about. It's about making your novel writing, your author career. Um, and editing is a big part of that. You can't just vomit draft something out and put it up and expect it to do well. I mean, you can. You can do that, but I don't recommend it. Um, so today we're talking about editing and revising efficiently. Now, I know a lot of people, myself included, who if they try to go into an edit phase or they try to go into a revision phase, it's a struggle. It's it's it takes a long time. Um, I can I can put a book down in a month. If I'm left alone, I can put a hundred thousand word book down in a month, pretty pretty easily. Well, not easily. I mean, it's my butt will hurt by the end of it. I'm not gonna lie. But editing and revising can take me six months. Um, that's, that's where a lot of my time is spent is editing and revising, uh, to the point where I don't typically try to do it. Um, I will do kind of a very light pass at the end where I kind of just like breeze through and, and check stuff. And if anything really like flags out, then I will, I will do it. And I, I try really hard to not have typos or, or grammar mistakes or whatever, but, but, um, you know, that, that really fine line edit, I don't do. Um, I rely on my editors, and I work kind of in real time with my editors most of the time. So, you know, as I'm writing, they're kind of going back behind me and making suggestions so that I can go back in and, and fix as I go, right? So, uh, but for me, I found that the editing and revising process is so inefficient that it's almost not worth my time to do. Um, I could get six more books done <laughs> if, if I didn't have to do that. So in in doing it the way that I do it, I, I, I typically tend tend to put about two months into the edit and revision process because um, I try to work hand in hand with, with the editors and proofreaders, beta readers or whatever as we go. And it's, I think that's important. I think you want to stay involved in the process. It's your book. It's your thing. You've got to make sure that you stay involved. You can't just vomit. Well, I mean, again, I think you can, whatever, but you know, you shouldn't just like vomit out a draft and like chuck at your editors and be done. Um, I, I mean, that's, I think I get as close to that as, as is healthy. <laughs> um, but you know it's it's a it's a process, right? And and you should do that. Our guest today, I have the pleasure of doing a collaboration with. So we're doing a trilogy together, and it's one of the funnest collaborations. Funnest, most fun. It's one of the most fun collaborations I've I've had the pleasure of of participating in. It's it's um, really been a joy. I mean, I, I don't think we've every time we had a problem, like we just. We kind of just chat it out, and it, it become it becomes a thing where we're excited about at the end, um, you know. And and it's interesting because I kind of like rip through and just kind of like blah words onto a page, and then he goes through and like with a fine tooth comb, just kind of like he you know, does like a, a line edit as as we go, and then he writes chapters well uh, as well, and we have kind of like picked our characters that we think we have good voice with, and kind of do chapters on those. I don't edit his chapters. Because obviously we want consistency through the, through the book, but um, what I what I found is is very interesting is is I go through and I and I I've watched him right like I, I don't know if I'm gonna share this with him when he gets on, but like I've watched him edit my stuff and I've been like oh man look at what he's fixing that comma splice again hmm I did that same thing in the previous chapter or for me it's more like previous paragraph um, maybe I should stop doing that and then that way he doesn't have to edit those anymore right so. It, and I, I have noticed in, in working with this collaboration, I do do some certain things that, that I probably shouldn't do um, as I'm just ripping through. 
And it's interesting because that's part of my like author voice, part of my author style. And I, it gets corrected all the time and I keep doing it, which is not efficient, right? We're talking about efficiency. So, you know, I think that, I think that it's fun to collaborate creatively, right? But it's also fun to kind of collaborate with the editing too. Um, and, and kind of in a more proactive kind of like, I'm, I'm curious to see what's happening kind of way. And we, we already finished one book together. It hasn't been published yet, but it's, it's sitting there waiting and, I went back through and read it after he had finished all of his edits and it was so good that I I found myself being lost in the story and and the way he cleaned it up and and not even paying attention to whose chapter it was or 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 what like it was it was so clean and and concise and and tight that it it was just great I, I found myself just completely lost in the in the fun of it so um I'm excited to see what we talk about today because I think that I think that you're gonna find that that Tyler is a is a really cool guy and has a system. One of the things I love about Tyler is he treats this like a job. I mean, he treats this like a nine to five. He 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 really leans in and 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 does the work and he and he calls it work. A lot of us we got, oh we're having fun we're you know, we're doing this we're doing that and we're you know I binge right where I'll just disappear for a week and write 20 hours a day and and survive on caffeine and dreams right and and then die afterward you know i'm like I pass out into a coma and or or can't work or sit at my computer even for a month after that but tyler's just diligent he's dogged he just he keeps going right he just he he keeps he keeps up the work and he 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 maps out work in front of him so that he just goes from one project to the next and it's just it's a routine and it's and it's great so I'm very excited to introduce our guest for today, editing and revising efficiently, Mr. Tyler Burnworth. Tyler, how's it going? It's going great, James. How are you? Oh, I'm still breathing. So uh, that means that there is hope, hope for the future. (laughs) (laughs) Hope hope that we can get our collaboration done. Um, Been pretty excited to to be working on that. And uh, I'm excited about this talk. Um, As you know, we're talking about effectively editing and revising work. Now, um, what I was just talking about is that we have kind of a unique perspective because we've worked together on some stuff. So I've got to see in near real time, uh, sometimes in real time, your edit process and how you go through and revise. So um, what do you think about editing in in terms of the the workflow? And do you wait till the end? Do you kind of self-edit as you go? Are you one of those chapter by chapter guys? How do you, what's your process? Let's start there. Uh, well, I think for me, I start writing. Uh, I have you know target word count every day or whatever. Say it's two thousand, three thousand words or whatever. Uh, as I'm going, I'll, I'll kind of know in the flow, uh, you know, sentence by sentence, if something kind of doesn't hit right, doesn't sound right, or if it's not making sense. And so I'll do inline edits as I'm going like that. But ch- typically, once I hit my word count for the day, I'll kind of breeze back over, look over, make sure that things are, are flowing the way that they're supposed to, and all that. Uh, so th- that's the extent. I won't sit there and you know nail bite over every nitpick every little word uh, every day, you know. But uh, I start that way, and then the really extensive editing for me after I complete a, an entire manuscript, I do a line edit myself. And okay. the line edit, uh, I know a lot of people say that they cut words once they finish uh, a book. They go in and, and you know kill your darling stuff like that. I typically find when I go back to edit, I actually add about three to five thousand words on a manuscript. I'm setting, making sure I set the scene right. I'm making sure that I got the rhythm in there that I want, and that there's continuity, like between scene breaks and stuff like that. Characters are staying true to themselves. You know, all the important things. Yeah, I I do the same thing. I I will usually cut between five and six k, but backfill like eight k. So like I wind up net like plus two thousand, three thousand words every time. Um, and I, 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 for me, and I don't, you know, like, like I, I, I've, I've admitted to you before, I don't do this. Like I vomit draft and I send it to editors, you know, multiple editors, multiple rounds. Um, and, and here's why the longer I stare at something, the more I want to add to something. So, and I found that most of the time my editors are removing stuff anyway. So I feel like I'm doing myself a disservice because I'm like just making more work for them and I'm just kind of spinning my wheels. But, um, it's never the stuff that I add in my edit that they delete. So I, I feel like it's still okay. 
Absolutely. Yeah. For me, uh, when I was, you know, first starting out before I ever had anything published, everything was kind of a big question of like, how much is too much or what details should I focus on? What are the important ones? What are, you know, extraneous details that are taking away from the action or the emotion in the scene or, or whatever. And uh, so for me, I do kind of vomit draft a little bit, but I, I keep it, I have guardrails up uh, kind of like on the quality and the pacing and stuff like that. But then when I go back in and edit, that's exactly what I'm doing is, you know, making sure all the little things are, are where they're supposed to be. And I find that because I prioritize, I, I try to have the perfect marriage of quality and speed, getting a book done efficiently, but making it as good as I can make it. And that line edit where I go through, I'm, that's another thing actually, uh, a trick that works for me is I write in dark mode. So black uh, background, white text. And then when I go to edit, I do that in light mode. So it has this little like trick kind of in my brain of like, I'm reading this for the first time. You know? Interesting. Huh, I've never heard that before. That's a cool idea. I'm gonna have to try that and see if it makes a difference. Um, what about reading aloud? Do you like read like if you hit a, like an awkward phrase? Do you like read it out loud, or do you have like Microsoft Word read it aloud or whatever for you? I tried the Microsoft Word thing and I I couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, same. Um, yeah, but it definitely if especially character dialogue, I I will have uh, some conversations with myself reading reading it out loud, kind of making sure that it, it sounds like each character has their own voice yeah. uh, and things like that, but. Uh, for the most part, not so much. Like, if I get stuck on something, I'll definitely do that, but it's not a, a go-to thing for me. So when you're when you're doing your line edit, what are your, your like, top three things that you're looking out for? Um, I know I know for me, it's repetition and redundancy. Like, I, I have a propensity to, like, talk about something and then, like, do something else and then go back to it. And usually, like, going back to it is... Un I mean, you know this. You've edited my work. So, <laughs> like, you know, I... I you know, I find that you don't need to go back to it, right? Like you've already kind of got what you need. And if there's something important in the second stuff, you just move it up, right? And you, you kind of keep it insulated. But uh, what what do you look out for? Uh, so that's actually something really helpful. I learned uh, talking to some of the authors that I've worked with is assume the intelligence of the reader. And I did not do this in my first couple books uh, that I wrote. And that's why they're not published. Uh, but over explaining things and, you know, you can only say the same thing so many different ways and you end up using those words over and over again that is absolutely one of the biggest things i look for is the same use of a key word over and over again and when something's important to the scene like uh military sci-fi you're writing about a weapon that a uh, character's using or something and use finding seven different ways to say a rifle right. you know it, it's challenging yeah but it definitely hits the the ear wrong or when you're reading it, it you feel it it kind of pulls you out a little bit if it's rifle is in every sentence for three pages you know right right yeah i mean that's uh that's that's hard i mean especially since like the parts of items are usually named things specifically you know so it's like you can't you can only get so creative um yeah i redundancy is is the thing that i i really struggle with like i usually tone voice and like character stuff like i they're they're real people talking inside my head so that's not a problem for me but but uh, overuse of commas, I have a tendency to be very lyrical in my writing and like writing stanzas instead of sentences, um, which I'm sure you're familiar with. James, stop using so many commas. <laughs> I have noticed that, but you have a very good flow. Uh, the thing that we're working on is coming along really good so far. Do yeah. you need to finish it? But uh, yeah, definitely the things that I've seen from you. It's, a, it's so interesting to me too. I know uh, we're talking about editing, but collaborations, I think, this has been a uh, incredible experience for me. When we talked about it, and uh, you know your grasp of character and the drama angle that you bring to it, it's to for me going in and, and editing or looking over the stuff that you did. It has exposed me to a whole other side of writing that I hadn't been exposed to before. Well, and so it's been a thrill. I feel exactly the same way. I mean, we talk about this every time. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever had a collaboration where, like, every time we get together, it's like, oh, man, I'm so jazzed about this. We're having such a good time. Uh, it's just, it's super cool. Uh, but also, I've learned from you, like, in the editing. Like, I, I'm i not going to lie. Like, I sat and watched you edit a whole chapter just to see what you changed. And when I, and then went through and reread it. And I don't re reread work that I write. I just, I find that the self-hate takes over and I, like, want to just delete it and start over. Um, but then when I did, I was like, oh, dang. That's really good. Did he just rewrite this whole chapter? <laughs> and, you know, kind of, yes. But, um, you know, it, it 
was still good. Like it, it's taught me a lot of stuff. So with this next book, I'm I'm trying to reduce the amount of work you have by remembering the things that you were you know consistently changing, um, and trying to implement that into the process. So hopefully, hopefully by the time we get to book three, there will be no editing. We'll just send it along right at the end. That's not gonna happen. Oh, there will never be no editing <laughs> uh, for for anyone. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's kind of the biggest changes that I see myself making in my own stuff. And the, the thing that we're working on also is like uh, when I'm doing the line edit, I'm looking for typos, you know, things like that, comma splices, uh, making sure that all the story elements are there, that the pacing's good, characters, voices are distinct and heard, and the action is really felt and stuff like that. But it's uh, consistency of each scene as well. It's yeah. like that, you know, things flow the way that they're supposed to. And I, I always start with making sure the scene is set like that's the, and I don't do multiple passes either as I read the entire book again for the line edit like I'm finalizing each scene each chapter as I go through so yeah yeah it's it's hard for me and I think I would benefit from more of your style with going back through and kind of like you know in the moment I'd like to get to the point where I could like finish a chapter go back through and just do a quick brush up on it. Because I come from the, the film world where you drop into the scene at the absolute last minute to understand what's happening and you get out as soon as you can. You don't linger, right? And that, you don't really want to do that with books. Sometimes you want to build the scene. You want to describe the space. A lot of times my chapters start with a line and dialogue that's like, oh shit, here it comes. Here what comes? What's happening? Where are they? What's going on, right? But, you know, I like to, I like to hype that drama for some chapters like right away you know like make the reader go what's uh, perk them up you know sometimes they're reading late and this is the last chapter they're going to read i want to excite them so much they read the next chapter so absolutely and that's part of it you know because uh when you do have action scenes and stuff like that your your words your sentences have to do a lot of heavy lifting because there's you know a lot of things going on and you got to use less words or concise words to kind of convey that so that you don't lose your pacing you know so each scene is different uh depending on what's going on and that's definitely something that I look for when I, when I do the editing. So let's talk about tools for editing, because I think that there's a lot of really cool tools out there right now that are helping kind of speed up the process. Um, you know, there's Grammarly, there's Hemingway, there's uh, Pro Writing Aid. Um, I know people who were even like loading chapter by chapter into ChatGPT and just getting like a review uh, on it. I saw this really cool podcast uh, a couple days ago where somebody was doing that and saying, you're a Mill Sci-Fi fan. You've been reading books like this person, this person, this person, this person. Tell me what you think of my chapter. And I think that's really wild. I don't know that it does it, you know, like ChatGPT kind of fakes it till it makes it, you know, like it just makes up what it doesn't know. But it was yeah. very, very wild to like have somebody be like, you know, you, you read books like this. Tell me what you think of my chapter. And it's like, well, this person writes this and their scenes are defined by this, 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 and this. Your chapter is slow and sluggish and has not a lot of dialogue. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty wild i don't know that i want to do that but it's it's in, it's an interesting tool so what do you what do you like to use if anything really i'm probably a dinosaur in this arena because i don't like using a lot of tools i pretty much just rely on the the reread that i do i'm very against ai for uh, a lot of things i know that it's going to change the world and we're right on the doorstep of that change and it's unavoidable it's you know critical mass you know is is approaching and all that but I do not use AI in any of my writing. The only things that I've played around with is if like a complex scientific topic that I'm trying to figure out or something, uh, you know, I'll ask it a couple of questions about that and then fact check it with the internet uh, on the back end, you know? Yep. Uh, but as far as like putting something in and saying, hey, rewrite this with no errors or something like that, like I, I don't like it, I don't trust it. Yeah. I know that may not be a popular opinion, but that's how I roll with it. I, I use ChatGPT, um as like a really amazing assistant. So, you know, like I'm like, I need to know where all the planets are in 2243. Can you map that out for me and tell me what the distance is between Mars and, and Europa, right? And it does it for me because it can do all that math really quick. And I, one of the things that I've learned is ask it to cite its sources. So, uh, and then it will, and it'll give you the links to the places that it's pulling data from. Uh, which is very helpful. That way, you don't have to just like do a straight Google search, which means you could have just done it on your own anyway, right? But like, it's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, uh, you know, and a personal assistant, a Jarvis, you know. Yeah, like, yeah just like I hadn't even thought of like, that. hey, calculate this for me. Like, I've had it do some really complex calculations on like 
uh, tonnage of explosion equivalents, right? So a ship's traveling this fast in space, uh, you know, against a ship traveling this fast counter to it, when it gets hit with this, you know, copper core projectile, what's the the equivalent tonnage of TNT the damage is going to be? And uh, compare that to the tensile strength of carbon nanotube hull this thick, right? And it can do it super fast and give you all of the math so that you can check it. But I'm not sitting here with a with a tablet going, oh, I hate math, right? So yeah, it's definitely it, it would be useful for that for sure. Especially as a sci-fi writer, I highly recommend just making it your Jarvis, just making yep. it making it your. I need to look this up, um, or sometimes I have it like just give me ideas. It's like I need an idea for a cool escape pod that isn't just an escape pod. Throw me some, throw me ten ideas, and it will, um, which is weird. So and I don't ever take it like verbatim either like i always i always fact check it i always kind of go like i like this part i like this part and i like this part and then make it my own but it saves me from having to just sit here and talk to myself (laughs) right for sure yeah so but anyway um i don't use it for editing either actually um i am a uh, a grammarly fan uh just because i got in on the beta of it and it's been you know in my gmail and you know word for um for and uh, final draft for screenwriting forever, so I'm just used to it being there. I found that it's wrong a lot of the time, <laughs> so that I, doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I, I tend to ignore it a little bit, but every once in a while, like it helps me catch just a, a random typo or you know a, a comma splice that's in the wrong wrong place or something. But for the most part, I I tend to just I'm like you, yeah, I kind of just ignore it. It's there as a as a oops, I spelled the H T E again, you know. Um, I've had the same issue with those things that I've had kind of with like trying to do like uh dragon like dictation stuff uh, you know with the genre military sci-fi like there's so many uh peculiarities for that genre that those things are not set up for yeah you know well yeah uh, fantasy too like you everybody's name's weird and flagged it gets to the point where your whole page is red and it's almost like why well, have it on so. exactly yeah I know some people are really successful with it they're able to tweak it and do all that I just to me, I would rather just write write the book, finish the book. Have you ever used Autocrit? I have not. So Autocrit is interesting because it compares your work to similar works in your genre, right? Um, and and if you don't know what similar works there are, it'll actually rec- it'll it'll read your work and be like, oh, this sounds like the writing of George R. R. Martin, um, even though we're both sci-fi writers, whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, like it it compares me to Brandon Sanderson's sci-fi, which is interesting. And you know, very character based, um, not as fast as as everybody else's sci fi stuff, um, but uh, you know, it, it's it, it's an interesting tool, um, and it does a lot of a lot of measurements about like tone and voice and tense, um, which is which is neat. Kind of gives you like an overall score. I, I haven't really figured out how to. You have to like use their system, so you have to like literally take chapter by chapter and like copy paste it into their system and analyze each chapter, which is very cumbersome. So I haven't quite figured out how to implement it into a workflow, but that's really the only like AI tool that like I've found to be of any interest because it it's literally just doing kind of a a, a comparison of your work versus other people's work and that's pretty interesting and I think I might be interested in trying that actually uh, uh, in one of the groups that I'm in uh, one of the authors just posted in there a very successful author about. Uh, a common mistake he sees for uh, new authors, newer authors, is that they don't know who they're writing for. Yeah. And uh, I feel like for me personally, I kind of struggle with that a little bit. Like I write things that I like, but you have to match it to the market and the market is the readers. You got to know who they are that yeah. want to pick up your book. Right. And so if I could get that in there and get some kind of recommendations of like eh, more kind of like this then yeah. i might be able to tailor my my stuff more to that yeah i'm pretty sure it gives you like an age range like a like a reader level a genre and similar authors in that area so if you're looking to do something like brandon sanderson and then you like hit the button and it comes up you know uh i don't know um glenn cook McCaffrey's. you know you're like <laughs> oh god like that's a fantasy author what the heck you know like right you know you it gives you it gives you kind of a an idea like it, it was it was interesting to me because when I wrote the Soul Saga, I was like, I, I thought I was writing it for like guys like me, you know, like middle aged sci fi nerds, like people who liked you know character driven sci fi, uh, but that wasn't at all the market that I hit with, and 
and I I was shocked. Like I was absolutely flabbergasted. And I didn't really know what to do. Uh, so when book one was predominantly not middle aged men sci fi fans, and, and I was pulling from other genres, I leaned into that and was like, okay, well, book two and three are going to be targeting that audience, um, and it and it worked out pretty well, but. It was still weird, and I, I wish that tool had existed back in book one, so I could like, you know, honestly, I think it did, but I didn't know about it. <laughs> so um, and that happens all the time. There's new stuff coming out all the time, you know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, auto -crate. pseudo writes another one. Pseudo write. Have you messed around with that at all? I haven't messed around with pseudo write. That, that one scares me a little bit for some reason. I don't know why, but it it bothers me a little. Yeah, the predictive writing forward and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a little strange. Okay, so. So tools, neither one of us really use them. That's great. Um, yeah. What about your routine? Um, you know, like we've talked a little bit about like, you know, you go back and kind of do your thing, but you said you do like a full tr a full manuscript when you're done, right? And like, is that like a fine line edit? It is a fine line edit. So it includes all the story elements, character elements, voice, uh, pacing, everything like that. And then uh, also the line edit is for typos, uh, inconsistencies with uh, the plot, things like that. And then once I finish that, it is off to the editor. It is done. Okay. Now, what's your feedback been from your editor? Is it usually like, hey, this was really clean? Or is it still like a, a, a red mess afterwards? Uh, well, I haven't... Uh, in the beginning, it was very messy. And now it's less messy. But there are still uh, things that get flagged. And embarrassingly, they're the same things. It's just the way that... Uh, that I write that it kind of produces certain, uh, and it's more like, uh, my voice, my author voice that I just phrase things differently, I guess, than yeah. what's the like grammarly acceptable way to do it, you know? Yeah. Uh, same I'm with my like weird lyrical three stanza sentences. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my poor editors are always like, James, please, for the love of God, stop doing this. I'm like, I can't, I can't help it. Um, so what about, what about self-discipline? I found that, I found that my, my struggle with editing is just like consistently doing it and, and staying in it enough, especially when you hit the chapters that you remember writing and like staying focused enough on what you're actually doing and not just like breezing through. I mean, the discipline part is integral to the process. If you, I mean, if you care about the quality of it, uh, then you obviously need to invest the time into doing that. And if you have editors, like they can do a lot of that for you. But the in my process, that final line edit, that is the last control that I really have over the finished product. Like once it goes to the editor, we're going to have discussions, make decisions, things like that. But that is the last part that is solely myself that is then going out for that. And so uh, putting the effort and the time into it for me uh, makes me feel a lot more confident when I do send it off to the editor and then it gets published and I know I did everything I could to make it absolutely as good as possible, you know? Yeah. Uh, one last thing. Um, what, are, what are some pitfalls that you, that you have overcome um, during the, like specifically the editing process? The mental thing is huge for me. Uh, like you said, like there's some parts where you can get to like a mushy middle of your book or something like that. You're editing it and uh, it starts to feel like it's impossible. And, and for me, every book that I've written has had at least one break point where I was convinced I couldn't finish the book, you know, that it was going to be impossible. It had too many problems, you know, whatever. Uh, but each time I just, I mean, treat it like a job. Like I have to get this word count today. I will get it at any cost. And uh, I find that when I go back and I'm doing my line edit and I'm editing, I can't tell where those parts are that I struggled. So, you know, I, I squeeze blood out of the rock to get that scene done. Really? And, interesting. Oh, yeah. And, and it reads no differently than the rest of it. So it's all all mental for me. Uh, just those those parts that are hard, difficult to get through. And then the editing part is like when I know I have other projects on the horizon that I'm super excited about, but I have to edit this book to to keep my workflow going and and you know that's got a little frustrating but well especially it's since, worth it especially since we're creative so we want to create right so it's like yes. when you've got that next one lined up and you're like oh but i've got the drudgery of polishing this one um one thing that that i was told by my dad before he passed away uh he was not an author but he could have been uh just a really smart dude he 
he told me because I was struggling. I was like, I am having such a hard time. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish this book. And it was right, right in the mushy middle. It was awful. I was pretty sure that I was a hack as a writer. And I was just never going to make it. Um, what? And he told me something that has stuck with me, and it has helped in those like moments where I'm feeling like, oh my god, this is impossible. The fun thing about being an author and telling stories is that you have an infinite number of solutions available to you. Wow. And that's, that's beautiful. That's so freeing because it's like, you know, if you're fixing a washing machine, there's probably one thing wrong with it and you need to find that one thing, get that part, put it in the right way and put it all back together to make it work, right? There's one solution that you have to find. With writing, there are an infinite number of solutions. So if you're working with infinity, that's nothing to be scared of. You just need to find the one that you like the best. Exactly. Yeah, that that's really, really well put and very useful yeah. uh, that's something that i've encountered a lot where i i do a very detailed outline but characters if you're trying to write them realistically sometimes they dispute the outline yep and they get you into an impossible corner that you can't get out of and yeah you got to get very creative to to correct that course you know uh but yeah infinite possibilities that's that's accurate yeah so i mean that usually happens to me about halfway through chapter one where a character like you know goes this way off the outline and it's like oh well i'm glad i spent all that time on the outline uh, or in the case right. of our collaboration you spent all that time on the outline sorry tyler <laughs> um, outlines are, are living documents you know as yep. you make those changes you just redo the outline it's not yep not a big deal all right right on well thank you so much for this i think that i think that that's i mean i think this is some of the hardest stuff to get through and i think that a lot of um authors especially their f first time don't really factor this into the process. They're like as soon as I hit type the end, like I you know send it off and it, it magically makes its way to publishing. Um, I am very bad at that as well. I should factor in about three days uh, for that line edit to thoroughly go through it, and I do not include that in my workflow. Yeah, and uh, I suffer for it. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. I always am like, oh, it's fine. I'll just send it to my editors. Um, luckily I have editors that work kind of in real time with me on my, my individual product, uh, projects. So, you know, like as I'm writing chapters, they're going through and editing and we have like real time discussions. And, um, one of the benefits of being able to write really quickly is I can kind of keep ahead of them a little bit, um, which is fun. So, um, anyway, Tyler, where can people find you? What projects are you working on that you're excited about? And, uh, what are some of your favorite projects that people can go pick up and, and check out your work? Well, uh, I write under the pen name Pacey Holden with Athon Books. I have a six book series, Space Hunter War, that I co wrote with Rick Bartlow, which, which is was a excellent. lot of fun. Super good. I've read it. So good. It was a lot of fun to write that. I mean, Rick's a great guy. It's a great opportunity to work with him and learn a lot from him. I also have a trilogy, uh, Brutal Edge. It's three books, which is a trilogy. Uh, you can get that on all books on Amazon. And then what I'm working on right now is uh, I've been doing uh, some ghost writing on the side for a different company than Athon. And then I have uh, some projects that I'm not ready to announce yet that will come out in 2025. And those will be under my real name, Tyler Bernworth. Awesome. Super excited about all of that. Um, and for anybody listening, go check out his books. He writes really, really well. Uh, his characters are great. Um, the the thing you did with Rick Partlow, the first book, I, I was hooked by like page ten. Just the wow. the opening scene, I was like, oh, I love this guy. <laughs> so it was it was really good. So I mean, if you're in if you're into sci-fi at all, I don't even care what subgenre. Check out it. Check out his books, Pacey Holden. All right, Tyler, it's great chatting with you, and I'm sure we're going to be conversing probably next week <laughs> i think so it was great james thanks for having me on thank you all right i i knew it was going to be a great episode i mean i just i knew it i knew it from the jump um, I, I knew i knew that tyler had an incredible process uh, i didn't expect him to not use any tools that was very fascinating uh, because he does a really like concise and tight edit so that's really cool that he just does that himself um that's great I, I, I wish I used more tools, frankly, like, you know, like I said, I use, I use, um, I use a couple things, uh, Grammarly and, and, you know, I kind of played with a couple other things. I just really haven't found my workflow. Uh, and I, we've talked about workflow and we've talked about routine and we've talked about all those things and, and trying to wrap those all up into a bundle, I think are very important, but 
you know, I, I know that people do their own edits like really, really quickly. Uh, I know people who do their own edits and then publish, push to publish um, with the help of, of some of these tools. So I, I don't know that I'm ever going to feel comfortable doing that, but it would be super efficient, right? Um, and that's, that's really what we're trying to focus on here, right? Is, is staying efficient and staying, allowing yourself to write more. And, you know, I think that, I think that it's, it's, it's very cool that Tyler um, and I have this collaboration that we've worked on where I've got to see him in real time or near real time editing and, um, you know, kind of like participated in it a little bit. I think that's fun. Um, I think it's important that we, we stay true to our process, right? Like if you're not an editor, then hire editors, right? If you're, if you're not a beta reader, then get beta readers. Um, get author friends to, to give you a beta read, um, you know, do beta reading partnerships. Um, I think that it's, it's, there's help out there if you can't do it. I, I it's not a strength of mine, right? I, I, my grammar is okay. Um, it's not great. Uh, and certainly not publishable without help. So I'll be the first to admit that I do the best I can and I'm learning. You know, I, I try to go back through and see what my editors change with the red line so that I can be like, oh yeah, okay. I see how that works. Um, I, I struggle with apostrophes, right? <laughs> like they're still, I think I missed that week and I think I had chicken pox in, in third grade or whatever, when we learned about apostrophes. And so I just, ne- it just never really sunk in for me. Um, so, well, that was maybe admitting too much, huh? Um, you know, I think that it's important to, to, to know like where, where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are and then, and then support those as you, as best you can and as efficiently as you can. That's the, that's the whole point to this. So, uh, editing. You got to do it, and uh, if you don't want to do it, then find people who will uh, and pay for it. So, yeah, put your butt in the chair and write. That's all you can do. And and when you when you've got a manuscript, I mean, you know, either you're doing it chapter by chapter like Tyler does, or and then doing kind of a big big edit afterwards, or you're waiting until the end of the manuscript. And you're starting from scratch and you're and you're writing through. Either way, it's got to get edited. So. Buckle up and get to it. All right, everybody. That's it for this episode. Keep writing, keep pushing, and remember, it's the ink and effort that brings stories to life. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow us on all the social media platforms for more tips and inspiration. See you next week.